Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon again. Um, this is really a very special part of our, our program. Um, as you can see from some of the agenda, we're trying to give you a better sense of some of the things that you may not be so familiar with that GMF does. Um, and, you know, those of you who know GMF well will know we have essentially three pillars to what we do. There's a policy pillar and a leadership pillar, and there's also a civil society pillar. And we're going to just take a few minutes and talk about that third one, the civil society aspect of what we do. Um, actually, GMF has been doing this for decades, and it's the, the do tank part, the on the ground action part of what we do. Um, it's very important, and I think, as you'll hear, it's probably becoming more and more important for a lot of different reasons. So what we're going to do just for the next uh, few minutes is, first of all, uh, I'm going to introduce a wonderful colleague, but then we're going to show you a brief film that gives you a sense of some of the projects that we're actually supporting on the ground. And then we're going to also have an opportunity to hear briefly from uh, two of our key partners from, for this work, uh, historically, uh, and how they see it and its importance. Um, let me just say, the three civil society trusts are just a fantastic part of what we do. Um, and I'm, but it, we're doing more than that, actually. It's the trust plus. We have colleagues in Washington, we have colleagues in Brussels, and our offices around Europe who are working on these issues, like Jonathan Katz in Washington, or Rosa Balfour, who you've heard uh, here in Brussels, uh, who are working on different aspects of this. Uh, but the trusts are really the core of it. And uh, to say more about that, I I'm really delighted to introduce a wonderful colleague of mine, Gordana Delic, who is the director of our Belgrade office, but also the director of our Balkan Trust for Democracy, Gordana. The floor is all yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, You're Ian. all set. Um, good day, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to this um, little panel that we have. So what do we do um, at the GMF is that, as Ian said, for decades we've been building transatlantic bridges between Europe and the United States through support to the civil society, not only financially, but we do much more. We're deeply invested in leadership development. We build networks. We build platforms for exchange of ideas. And together with my colleagues at the Black Sea Trust for Regional Cooperation, Alina Inaye, and Jörg Forbrig at the Belarus Fund for Democracy, um, we have been invested in this work in the last, well, over 16 years. And what we want to show you today is a little film. It's a short four-minute or five-minute film that showcases what actually is happening on the ground and how people feel and why it is still important, even today, to support the civil society and to support democracy and philanthropy and basically the freedom that we all strive for. So with this, I am going to hand it over to the film, which I'm not quite sure where it's going to I believe in happen. building bridges. I believe that a country cannot isolate itself and say it's a democracy. I said I'm now 37 years old, and those 30 years of democracy have probably been my whole life that I actually remember. It's been uh, a ride towards an end of democracy or the end of transition that we were all expecting. However, uh, I don't feel that we have reached an end. I think the democracy in, in this country and in former Yugoslavia actually had its little spots and little hope but it was very quickly stopped by the, some kind of nationalistic and retrograde politicians and their vision. And uh, you never have democracy enough, and uh, democracy as we see, even the, in the oldest democratic countries in the world, with the most established and, and elaborated democracies as we know it, the question and the issue of democracy is a daily subject which you should fight practically as starting from zero, almost. Democracy is this fragile 
process and that it can you know, decline at any moment and we all have to continue to work hard. I think democracy is in decline in a lot of places around the world. It's up to the civil society organizations to work and building a democracy is an ongoing process. It never stops. Our societies will change and we have to be ready we have to prepare our societies for the time are in front of us. If you are a small state and not even this kind of micro states as Serbia, Albania, Macedonia, even Bulgaria, you know, these are micro states, if you import stability from your neighbors. You always will have this, uh, these fights. You will always will have these disruptions. And you always will have these subversions from an adversary if you have this adversary. Ukraine was not ready to fight uh, the networks of uh, controlled fake accounts over social uh, networks that were playing the crucial role in news distribution. Controlled news, fake news. Technology and the internet and social network have this potential to mobilize, to engage and to gather like-minded people and uh, start and trigger processes, even revolutions within a society. Equality and uh, democracy and dignity are three major words and values that are shaping the Ukrainian, specifically young society today. The news was saying these young people changed the regime. So they know their rights. Why? Actually, it's right now it's easy to understand your rights from social media. And what I feel now, I feel that it's a freedom. It's freedom to think, it's freedom to speak, it's freedom to express whatever you want. I would say there are the pillars of the bridge. I would not say we have built the bridge because I think it's gonna take us some time to actually build that bridge. So just to keep the discussion going and, and to keep everyone equal in that discussion, that would be enough for me. I would say our region is on the level of some other undeveloped regions. Like it's in nature of politicians to want to control media. In the nature of media should be to resist that. What I see as the biggest problem of media in our region is that they stopped resisting enough. We still live in a world where people want to dominate because they fear, they see it as a limited good. Wars have fallen in 1989. I truly believe that these walls which some politicians are now building in Europe, they will not be able to finish. I expect we will have more bridges, more close ties, cultural bridges, art bridges, information bridges, but not walls, not walls. I want to thank one of the BTDs, the Balkan Trust for Democracy partners, who actually made this film. He's here tonight, uh, today, with us, Darko Sokovic, who started basically his organization as a nonprofit that was so successful and turned it into a profit for nonprofit, and now it's a real and serious media fund. Thank you for being here with us and thank you for, for this film and for your, all of your cooperation with us. We have two distinguished guests that I would like to call on today. One is Mr. Brock Bierman, the Assistant Administrator for Europe and Eurasia from USAID, and the other is the Deputy Director General from the Engineer, Katerina Maternova. Both of our guests are champions in assistance and assistance to the civil society, uh, and both have been in this work for a long time. Um, and I have the same question for both of you. I would like to first call on Mr. Birman, and that is, what could the EU and US do together to support the civil society in times like this with the challenges of today? Um, 
and particularly, what could we do together to strengthen the transatlantic cooperation and build the transatlantic bridges for the future? If it's okay, I'm going to stand up because I hate to turn my back on folks. Um, but I just want to take a quick thanks to GMF for allowing me to come here today and uh, and and really um, talk about the importance of our partnership. And I want to thank uh, Katarina specifically for her important uh, partnership and DG Near's imp uh, important partnership with USAID. Because uh, and I'll book, uh, bookmark my comments. Uh, it has never been more important that we support civil society in our work. It has to be a top priority. Uh, my folks wrote a 30-minute speech for me. They told me I had 30, three minutes, and I'll try to keep it short. But when I think about what we just saw in that film, wow, right? Thank you. Um, I, I think about how far we've come in a matter of 30. 30 years ago, I was 25. And frankly, I was a young something. And I started, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for civil society. I started a, a small group called Forest, which was families opposed to ruining environmental state treasures. Uh, they wanted to build a park, an amusement park in a, an open space area, and the neighbors and I came together, and you know, it was seamless, right? Because that's, that's the society that we grew up in. It was easy to start something like that. Uh, a few years later, I went to uh, Eastern Europe for the first time. Not so easy. But to think about what has happened in the last 30 years. Back when I visited Eastern Europe for the first time in, in 1997, I remember them telling me about Subutnik. The idea of coming together to help society has changed in a generation. And that is amazing. And I see the people uh, who are so passionate about building bridges. And I say to myself, we are, we are headed down the right path. And yes, the, the bridge is not finished yet. We have, we have established pillars. We've established benchmarks, and I think we do have some work ahead of us. But we've got great partnerships, and we have to expand those partnerships. We need to look to see how we can expand it, because frankly, folks, democracy and civil society are intertwined with one another. We cannot have a flourishing democracy if we don't have a flourishing civil society. I, I know I'm pressed for time, but I, I, I just, look, I, I want to say this. Um, there was so much in that film that I could go over. Um, democracies still learn. Even after 243 years, we're still learning in the United States, and we still have uh, paths that we're, we're changing. And those are positive movements toward what I think is putting people together on the right path. And when we think about working with DG Near, and when we think about working at, at USAID, and I, and I, and I specifically want to thank, uh, again, GMF, I mean, and the Black Sea Trust, and the work we're doing with Watchdog MD and countering uh, disinformation and helping people be more active in their communities and understand their roles in the community. I also recognize that we have an important responsibility to bring every democracy, every country that embraces democracy together. Because without bringing all democracies together, we cannot have a flourishing civil society. Without flourishing civil society, we can't have democracy. So again, I, I want to take the opportunity to thank everyone for the opportunity to come here today and, and work with you. We've, uh, I've only been on the job for a, a year and a half this time around. I was with AID before. But um, getting to know you, Katarina, has been a, a real pleasure and a real great partnership not just at our level, but throughout the entire working level. And I think that's what we need to continue to do. We need to put everybody together at whatever level so that we can start how creating better partnerships. Thank you. Thank you. I have the same question from you, but for the EU perspective, and just for the record, I've known Mrs. Matronova since the 90s when she was on the board of a foundation that I used to work for in Slovakia, and I'm happy every time I see you, and I'm so glad you have stayed with the civil society. Thank you very much, and it's, uh, thank you very much, Karen, and everybody at GMF, Jonathan, mm -hmm. for inviting me back. Uh, I guess, and it's really uh, a pleasure to be, work with such dedicated and professional people as, as uh, yourselves and your colleagues. I just have three points. One is that working with civil society and supporting civil society is really central. I don't know how to do the turning, so I don't <laughs> turn my size. I'm sorry, Rock. Um, is really central to our engagement with, uh, with our partner countries. 
and uh, to build resilience, to have policy dialogue, political dialogue, we, we really rely on civil society, both as a service provider, but also, also the, the one that brings experience, expertise from a different angle. And is also a watchdog, because we operate in parts of the world where vested interests and all sorts of oligarchic structures and the capture of the state is very strong, and the civil society is really an indispensable part. So that's my first point. My second point, and going a little bit like Brock did, to his uh, personal experience. Um, I'm from Slovakia, and uh, when we were going through our transition, the US uh, funding, the US private uh, government funding, UK funding, German political foundations, etc., the, uh, the Dutch, the, the Norwegian funds, all of that was very present. And the EU funding was sort of little elusive because it was so complicated, so bureaucratic, such high amounts that were not really relevant to us. So when I, when I took over in Digineer, this was really my mission to see how we can make the funding more relevant, not to finance, but support civil society in our partner countries. So we allowed for institutional grants, not only action grants. We, tr we lowered the amounts. We really encouraged on granting. And one of the things that we did is work much more actively with institutions like the European Endowment for Democracy. I see Pavel sitting in the audience from the executive board. And we also entered into a partnership with the GMF Balkan, not Balkan, sorry, the Black Sea, Black sea Trust as the first one. And really to expand the, the clientele of, uh, of our civil society funding and, and really get the get the money and get the support out, out of the capitals and to a different type of organizations that we were not able to reach before. My second point and my third point is to say that I think it's even more important now with the attack on media, not in only in our part of the world but uh, elsewhere, with the disinformation, with hybrid uh, warfare going on, we think that supporting civil society is really key to building societal resilience. That is not only the interaction with, with the governments and the state actors that is necessary, but also, also supporting the civil society. And therefore, doing it in a <laughs> spirit of transatlantic partnership is uh, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, and um, let me just allow me please to say that the regions where we work um, have been a true evidence of the fact that the transatlantic cooperation um, is still vibrant and still working really well, particularly I would say in the Balkans. Balkans has been a um, real um, example of good transatlantic relationship and of good transatlantic cooperation. Um, and with this, um, I would say we will need to conclude, but do allow me to thank you to Digineer and to USAID, to Mrs. Maternova and to Mr. Bierman for being here with us today. And also thank you for all your support, not just financial, but for the whole of the cooperation that we have had with you throughout the years. It's been a pleasure and I hope that we shall continue for the years to come with this cooperation. and that we will continue supporting the civil society and democracy in the parts of the world where it is most fragile and at stake, basically. Thank you again for being here with us tonight, uh, today. It's, I'm not quite sure. <laughs>